Okay, greetings and salutations. What is today, Tuesday, as I'm recording this? I got, as I showed, if you happen to be watching the stream yesterday, I showed, I got a source of the Nile in the mail, which, if you recall, again, if you've been following along, we had, uh, and here's, that, by the way, source of the Nile. This one, I think, is one of the earlier editions. 1978 Discovery Games edition. And I noticed when I was looking through some to see if there's some online scanned manuals. I think there's one from a later version of the game because Avalon Hill also put it out. So there's different versions. Anyway, we looked at a uh, week or a couple weeks ago these this big house rule document from one of the Blackmore bunch. And one of the things they mentioned in their document is that they used source of the Nile to stock their hexes. And that I, that that's kind of got me down a little rabbit hole and finding a reasonably priced version of this. I think I got this one on eBay. I think this is from me. No, no, this is from, sorry, from Board Game Geek. Got this from the Board Game Geek marketplace. I thought, well, let's give it a shot. All right, first I, I bought it and now having it in hand, kind of scanning through, I see that there are indeed some tools for mapping. So I thought I would take kind of a simple setup here, this hex. And that we'll just kind of fill it and go through the steps. It is interesting. So one of the things I did look at is, which is interesting, is kind of the way this works in the game. And maybe I will, let me switch cameras here for a moment. Hey, Michael Fraker. Uh, let's, uh, let me, let's do, hold on. I got to click some buttons here. That's that. And then I can, whoop, do that. I can focus that a little bit better. There we go. Hey, Ian. Fergus says they had a badly photocopied version for years. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting kind of game. Uh, I'm I'm following along, uh, Mr. Fraker, so uh, feel free to keep tapping in there, and I will, when you get it all out there, uh, I'll, I'll visit your comments. So just in terms of, this is the kind of map you get at the start of the game. Notice it's got some filled areas. You can see here from previous play, there's some, <clears throat> I don't even know if it was erased or just faded where folks had played, but you've got the, obviously you have the coast because you're on, uh, following around the coastline of Africa, more or less. You've got some of the terrain filled in. These, uh, the brown up triangles are uh, mountains. The brown filled are deserts, filled blue, which you can just see, I guess they filled in, they must have faded or they filled in on one playthrough, are lakes. These green inverted, or these green Vs or Ws, sharp Ws are belts, which I think would be equivalent to kind of a grassland or mixed grass slash forest. And then something like over here is swamp. I'm not sure. Oh, and jungle, if it has a green border, it is jungle. And then they have some mixed terrain, so you can have jungle and mountain, jungle and swamp, just plain jungle. And they also have, you can also get cataracts on the river, which would be where they're showing like a, a, a rectangle that bisects the river. That's kind of a, I guess it could be a shallow. I think, from what I understand, it's sort of a shallows or rapids, I don't even know if it has to be, but basically rapids. Rocks are jutting out. It's not smooth and calm. So, and then what you do is, you're starting somewhere and you're going inland. So you go inland until you get to the edge of the known, and then you'd start <clears throat> you know, exploring as you're going and figuring out what's in all these unknown hexes. The reason why it's interesting, in, just in terms of what I read so far, is that for rivers, so one of the big, issues uh bedeviling things with creating terrain solo players i think can feel this in particular if you're trying to create your terrain on the fly what is the problem rivers because if you've been going around and you're filling out all your hexes and suddenly you get a river hex and it doesn't make sense because maybe there's nowhere for that river to have flown to what do you do of course you can always reset roll again 
whatever, you know, there are multiple ways to handle it, but there is this concept of rivers. How do you deal with them? How, you know, I think a lot of times we're trying to do things in kind of one roll or one step. And it's like, okay, well, I put all the terrain on one die and I roll it and I get a river and then I'm rolling. And I never get river again. What happened to that little segment of river? It's a, it's a confusing thing. They're not trying to solve for this in this game, but what they are doing is because generally speaking, they have rivers. It's supposed to be kind of, Pseudo historical, you're starting out from this historical base. Now, granted, kind of a 19th century historical base from the from the point of view of essentially a, a colonizer or colonizer type. Right? You're here as a European. You're so you're a lot of the stuff's unknown to you anyway. So you would come and let's say you're in, let's just go here. You're following this river here. You come up to here, and now you start exploring. They're able to, in some ways, eliminate or change the river generation because now you know there's a river flowing out of here. So the, really, the question is is not so much about is there a river in this hex, but kind of what's the nature of this terrain? And then we'll go through the rules. But that's kind of where they're coming from because often you'll be, I don't know how often, but you'll be in a situation where we're coming from here. We follow this river. We don't. We come into this hex here, the river's got to flow in there somehow. Doesn't mean there has to be a river, could be a lake, could be a swamp, could be something, but there's a water body here. Same thing. We got it. And they actually have some interesting rules, which is kind of cool. That probably could be adapted, which I liked, which is if you notice here, let's say by the Limpopo River, we've got this number 13. And then here for the Zambezi 16, there's another one up here. Can't quite see it. Uh, Orange River 14. What that means is these rivers cannot die out unless there have been a number of water bodies equal to that number. So if you ever, if you're in this hex, we've come up, we're following, you know, we, we started off at the coast, we follow the river, we get to this hex, and they're not numbered, so otherwise they give a number. This river can't just die. If we roll a result that says, oh, it's no river here, we have to ignore it because it has not, that number hasn't been reached yet, which means that this river cannot really expire until you get somewhere into the interior because even if you're just counting hexes, I need to have 13 things. I got to count, even if I'm just counting 13 hexes, that each one of these hexes were a, a lake, a swamp, or whatever, right? You're getting one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, right? You, you got to, it's going to be getting, and this is, this is just one half of the map. So it actually holds up. You can see that the actual, just flip it over here. See, we've got the, the known uh, portions of the Nile, blue and the white coming here. So it's kind of neat, it, 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 but it, it, it's solving for the problem in a different way, right? They're coming from kind of, we know, they're starting from a, a number of knowns, a number of knowns, in other words, we know the coastline, we know the things around the coast, and we know the rivers that come out to the coast. So we can kind of make some therefores. And they, they say in the rules, and I'll we'll read through, but in the rules they talk about how the, I guess, the original European explorers, they would essentially try to estimate the flow of the river, try to say, like, how, how, how big is this river system based on how much it's outputting into the ocean? And that's where they kind of got these numbers from. So it's these kind of comparative strengths of the rivers as it's as it's reaching the ocean, which is they're saying therefore tells us something about how many sources there must be upstream, upriver somewhere, which would be actually kind of a really neat system to use in terms of your hex calling. If you're on the coast or other words, you could kind of look at it and say, hey, I hit a river. How strong is this river? And then that tells us something about kind of upstream, downstream. I think it works best from the coast. But it's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's a way to extrapolate something basic out because the other thing is from here is what they're giving us really is tuned to the interior of Africa. So they're using terms like velts and there's jungles and things aplenty and not other things like they're not worried about. Oh, is there a a carnivorous forest around? Don't care. They're not. That's not what they're trying to do. Which is another kind of interesting thing to maybe take away from this is. We're used to trying to provide universal tools. 
anywhere on this, the planet, I come and I need random terrain. I'm using one set of one set of dice results. There's another path, which is much like we do with everything else, right? You may start with a global thing and you say, hey, for this region, right, what are my wandering creatures? So let me make tables based on those wandering creatures. Here they're saying, okay, look, we're not trying to map every part of the earth. We're just want to get us some kind of reasonable, something that's squint and maybe think, oh yeah, maybe that's some version of Africa as it develops. So that's all they're giving us here. So yeah, if we have mountains, swamps, jungles, kind of grasslands or mixed grasslands, lakes, and then we got some different versions. They're not worried. We're not getting ice. We're not getting, uh, again, different types of forests outside of jungles. They're not really concerned with hills either. It's just, you know, I, it just doesn't really matter for them or it just doesn't enter into them in, in things mechanically. Either way, it's kind of neat. So what I thought we would do, and let me, uh, we'll just kind of go through it and we'll read the steps as we get to the steps. I'm going to, I guess I'll leave it in this mode. And I apologize. I, I, I'll probably have to do something if I do something like this in the future. I'll have to go into something like OBS and really set things up where I can have it. Structured, I'm using this web interface, and it's just very limited in the amount of multi-camera setup that up I can do. So, sorry about that. This is uh, some good old-fashioned blood orange spin drift for the working man. All right, let me see what Michael Fraker and others were saying up here. So, Michael Fraker wanted to know that they've been thinking about travel versus exploration, which is a, a video that I put up earlier today. What if I had a lar large-ish hex encounter table? Uh, did you finish your thought there? Roll d20. Okay, yeah. So what if you had a large-ish uh, encounter table? Then roll d20 per hex entered. One equals a monster encounter its layer. Two equals a monster encounter. Five to six monster at some quote-unquote place. That's not its layer. Monster with some sign of a place. That's also not its layer. Nine to 12. Party stumbles on a random place. 13 to 16. Sign of a place nearby. 17 to 20, no encounter. I mean, you could totally do something. I mean, it's kind of like a, it's like a, it's a bit of a, uh, what would they call it? A uh, overloaded, overloaded hex stalker. I think there are many ways to do it. And I think part of the thing is I, I, I do agree with folks that it should be something. I think that something doesn't have to be a physical thing. It could be a new trail, an old road, uh, any kind of sign, right? That kind of sign anything that kind of indicates, oh, something is over here. And I think the bigger your thing is, or grander, more important in kind of scope, in power, the more obvious those signs could be. So for a, a you know, an owl bear cave, you're probably not going to see a lot of signs, but you could narrate as you're in that hex where the owl bear cave is that maybe you find some owl bear tracks or something that could be owl bear tracks. Because sometimes you're not sure, but you look at it and say, oh, that could be something, you know, you can, Oh, that could be uh, some kind of large bear or something similar, or it might be something smaller and, and the tracks got munged up. Or maybe you see trees that have been, or you find are, that have been marked or scratched, but at a high enough, high enough height off the ground that it wouldn't appear to be something small or some big feathers on the ground. So on and so, so forth. So I think that stuff is, is really good. Good. And in kind of the point I was trying to get with my, my video is not that it's bad that you have points of interest out there, but it's just a different type of thing. I think we end up using kind of words. Oh, I'm seeking, I'm exploring, I'm finding what they're kind of, they can be sort of different, right? And I'm looking at exploration as you're going in the unknown, looking for something like in this game, right? You were going into the unknown. You were starting at known places. And then you were going into this area that you do not know what it is. That to me is exploration, which is different than just you know, I know something is out there and, I, and I'm going to go kind of kind of get it. And I think to the credit of games like Breath of the Wild or whatever the sequel one is called, they give you this nice, nice network of known stuff versus unknown. And I think we saw something similar when we looked at that area of the wolves upon the coast map yesterday. There's sort of these networks of things that, OK, it's kind of known. And then you have these other areas that you're not going to know, really have no connection. They're not on the rivers. They're not. They're in this kind of other spots, and then you're going to have to kind of go find them if you want to. And really, the question is, with all this stuff, really is how do you encourage your party to get out there and try to find that stuff? 
how do you get them to go? If that's the game is go out and find stuff, you know, here, this game is right. Source of the Nile that, that if you wanted to do that could very well be an adventure in a setting is the king at the coast wants to know about the, the headwaters of whatever river their city's on. It's important to them or something's happening to those rivers. I think that was even, I believe when I was at Clericon, Dungeon Minister, that was kind of something running in their game was the scale. They weren't really hex crawling so much. I don't think the scale was that long, but it was basically something is happening upstream that is adversely affecting where the party is. And someone's like, hey, could you go up and find out what's going on upstream? Because stuff is going poorly. So there, there's definitely a lot you can do. Um, let's see. Michael Frigger also says... Monsters per separate monster table. Right. Yeah. You can have sub tables for basically monsters, places, etc. Yep. No, I got you. It's a good idea. Frederick says you can let players roll the dice as they enter hex. Yeah, you can share the die rolling. Some people really love that. I think, Frederick, you're a big proponent of letting the players run. As a player, I don't care that much. I really don't. I really don't. I, I, I don't really feel that it heightens my experience rolling the die now the one the fun thing about rolling the dice i will say is this but this is more to me for wandering creatures is if you rolling the dice as a player as for wandering creatures then it kind of becomes on you in a way and it's like it's that part of the thing i love about wandering creature checks when the whole table's aware of the mechanic is much like rolling it openly it's like well the die rolled a six and a six means encounter it's not it, it, that responsibility is not on me as a gm and there's even that further bit is if, you know, we're <laughs> just as people, you go like, gosh, darn it, GM, you're you and your your evil D6. Well, that's all fine and good. But now if I say, all right, Frederick, you roll the D6 and then you roll six, it's even more room. Now it's on me as a player like, oh, I'm so unlucky. It just it, it, it it's a kind of a sharing of the burden. But I will say as much in terms of the rolling contents thing that just me as a player, I don't I'm not that. Uh, I, it doesn't. I don't. I don't think it really matters to me. But you may have players who that engage, who that engages a certain thing with. So I'm not really trying to discount it, but it's just something that kind of. It's. I, I feel like those things are sort of a. Your miles may vary at your table. Some people are going to be really into that. Oh, I'm rolling dice. I'm doing it. Other people like me are like, eh, okay, I rolled for it, but I don't feel. I don't feel any more ownership of that hex because I did the the die rolling. I'm, but I'm also someone that comes in like I really want to play in your world. If I'm playing at your game, I want to play in your world. I don't need to feel input on the world because I'm really here to experience your world. That's kind of part of the thing for me is I, I want to do your world. I mean, I'm here, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I'm here prattling on on this channel about stuff you know that I'm coming up with all the time. When I'm playing a game, it's like, no, no, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to do it. I want, I want to be in your, I want to be in your thing. You tell me what's going on. All right, let's roll. So I don't. There's not really a way to do this in this case. That you know, again, from source of now, they, they start with the coast. So they kind of start with some if thens off the bat. We don't have any kind of coast, so and we don't really have any guidance of how to do it. And this layout, I just did a six by six, and this is kind of what you get. All right, that's six by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Yep, six by six. So I think I'm just gonna do it by rows. There is a bit of hey, where you have encountered, you kind of do it. So I'm just gonna start at zero zero, and we're just gonna roll. And I'll switch really quick just so we can see it here. Uh, can we see it? Let's see. Is that a little bit blurry? It just look blurry to me. Let me see. I can zoom in. Might just take me a minute. Hold on a minute. No. Oh, oh. All right. That's just my, my mouse. All right. So we've got. Uh, desert on a one, two mountains, three swamp, four jungle, five belt, which is I think like a mixed kind of scrub, a little bit of trees. I'm just going to call it grasslands. Um, and then we, you can see they kind of have some notes. And it's interesting, the sort of things they have to go through. It's it's kind of funny when we get to the rivers part. I'll read it, but it's a little bit, it's, I don't know if it's just a product of its time or just, it just speaks to the, there's just some complexity to this that's not easy to just, mess with and they're trying and the other thing here is they're trying to get some semi you know a, a realistic 
kind of results. So they're they're trying not to get too wacky with it. But because they have their coastlines already and they have surrounding hexes, they're counting on the fact that you're looking at what hex you're coming from. So, right? Because you're doing this in their game, you're doing it as part of the game. So you're not in, in the game, you are not doing all this ahead of time, right? You are in this hex and you are then moving here and it's and you're entering that. So then they're able to look at and say, oh, what hexes are what hexes are next to you? Then we'll do that. So when we're just doing this from scratch, at least filling in this first hex, we don't have that. So we're just gonna go with we're gonna go with what they uh, what they give us, and then we'll go from there. So I got I rolled a three. So for zero 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 zero, that would give us swamp. All right, let's find where is some swamp. Now we're going to roll the next one. I got the six. And some of this, so there's some rules. If any adjacent hex is already known to contain jungle, if you get a desert result, you'll get, you would get grassland instead. If any hex, if any adjacent hex is known to be desert, <coughs> we'll get grassland rather than jungle. But of course, neither of those applies. If we had rolled a jungle, we roll to see if the hex also contains swamp. We rolled swamp. But there's another if. If we if we rolled swamp or mountains, we did, then we roll to see if it's also jungle. So basically, just have you roll again. And if I rolled a four, which I didn't, it would also be jungle. So it's it's just swamp. So there's our hex number one. Now we rolled hex number two. I rolled a one. We'll see, does this apply? So I guess we just get desert. What's note A? If any adjacent hex is already known to came jungle, no, that's that's fine. Uh let's see. If the random terrain is even jungle, no, I already got that. If a hex adjacent to a random swamp or mountain is known to contain desert, do not roll for jungle. Okay, so yeah, so I got desert. And I'm gonna use I don't know, I'm just gonna use I don't really like these desert ones. Quite honest, but I guess I'll just use regular whatever desert. You don't know why it's deserty, but it is. Maybe it's just bear. Now I rolled a two, which gives us a mountain. And what was the roll? If uh, let's see, if the random terrain generated has been swamp or mountain, roll to see if it's also a jungle. Nope. Okay, it's not jungle mountain. Now the next one. I rolled a three, we get another swamp. Whoops, that's the wrong hex. Oh, I'll just I delete. I don't think there's a way for me to delete, is there? Uh all right, I'll just make it blank. There we go. Okay. So that was swamp again. So now I got to roll to see if it's also jungle. I rolled five. It is not. Now for the next one. Man, I'm rolling one. This is a weird, weird. And then finally five, which is grassland. And I'll use bam, like that. All right. So does that make sense? I mean, it doesn't look grand. Just in terms of uh, swamp, desert, mountain, swamp, desert, grassland. <clears throat> maybe some other badlands. Maybe I don't know. We'll, have to, we'll we'll see. We'll see. We can. You know, I don't. I hate to prejudge it. So now we're on the second row. Zero 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 one. I got three. That's swamp again. Uh, let's see. Is there any? Oh yeah. See, so the other thing is, I'm gonna roll out. Okay, so something I wasn't doing. Um, shoot, I forgot. Okay, I should have done something else. Yeah, I missed a step already. So we'll start here. After basic terrain has been determined by the methods above, the explorer, it's great because we're, hey, Terrence, they're talking about explorer. They're talking about because you're doing it in your turn. We're doing it just to generate hexes. So explorer means us. If the new hex being mapped is lake, swamp, or jungle swamp, there will be no visible river course through the hex, and we don't need to, we can skip that. All right, so we're good for swamp. 
Oh, let's see. For other basic terrain types, the presence or absence of rivers in the new hex is largely decided by the terrain adjacent in adjacent hexes, which we'll have to we'll have to see because we might get river flowing. I don't know. We'll have to see. So let's just do the first one. We're just going to go and do these rivers. Sahid says the jungle desert rule should apply to swamps too, in their opinion. Um, let's see. Um, which one is that? The uh, the swamp, the jungle desert rule. What's the jungle desert rule? Is there a jungle desert rule? Because ah, there's a bunch of rules, <laughs> and I am not familiar. All right, let's see here. Uh, okay, so the jungle C note B. If an adjacent next are known to desert, this will be felt rather than jungle. Oh, I see. Yeah, they probably should do something like that. I agree with you. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a uh, executive decision that uh, yeah that that kind of makes it a lot more sensible. I would agree. Okay, executive decision. Yeah, that we don't want any of these weird deserts out there. So thank you for that. Because yes. Okay, still need to do this. So we don't have rivers flowing in our axe. We're at the edge of the map. We, uh, so there's a bunch of rules here. Should I switch? All right, let's go. Yeah, let me switch my views. There we go. So we have a bunch of rules for, I need a way to move this over, but I can't right now. Things to do for another stream. Okay, so we have a bunch of rules. Or we can see right here. So this is what I'm reading through. After basic terrain, okay, we don't have any river or rivers known to flow out. What the heck? We don't. So this would be if we were, remember going back to the, the set, if we were in this hex, we know that it flowed, there's a river flowing out. Everything's flowing in the ocean, so we know that there's a Something's flowing out into here. We just don't know what this is, but we know there's river coming out. We don't have that yet because everything's unknown. So I'm going to skip all these things about rivers or rivers known to be flowing it. Now we have this section here, which is no rivers known to flow in or out. We're going to roll a die. If the result is odd, there will not be any rivers in the hex. If the result is even, there might be. So let's see first. Odd or even? We got even. Okay, so there might be a hex. If the result is odd, so we don't need to do that, so we rolled even. If the result is even, there may be a river source in the hex. Roll the die again and consult the directional indicator that's printed on the map board, which would be this. Now we're going to roll the C, and I got five, which is straight over into another unknown hex, unfortunately for us, because the swamp, I might override that and say it's coming from the, <laughs> coming from the swamp, which might make the most sense. Uh, but let's see. River sources may not be found in desert. Okay, we got it. Okay, so if the adjacent hex the indicated direction is lake, swamp, jungle swamp, or unexplored, river source is located at the center of the hex. Mark it with a blue dot. All right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put the. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know. I'm just gonna. Just for ease, I'm gonna put it in that swamp. I'm gonna make. Uh, I need. Not favorites. I need classic. Can I get a blue dot? What is that? No, I don't want a crater. Do we have a blue dot? Just a blue. We got that. Can I override the color with? that bam now i gotta make a what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have to because we gotta i don't want to draw the river because uh, how can i put what can i do here how can i mark the river without it being too mm -hmm. don't have the right thing i think i don't need a shape Oh, let's 
the all right i'm going to use a Ride default scale. What does that make? Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put that dot there. That way we know. That way we know it's not quite a hand cam, Terrence. It's just I don't have it on a. It's it's not a hand cam, but it's just not particularly steady, unfortunately. Apologies for the any kind of jerkiness. It's kind of a. This is kind of a janky, a little bit of a. Jerry rig setup. All right, so we got that. We got uh, got that river sorted. I'm going to call that one sorted. Now we got to do the mountain. So oh yeah, so we can stay here. We have no we have no uh, no river flowing in or out too. So even again, there might be a river source. Let's see. We rolled rolled the diagonic assaulted direct. Indicator. Let's see. Let's see. Um, if the adjacent hex in the indicated direction is lake, swamp, jungle, swamp, unexplored. Okay. What if it's not? If the adjacent hex is not one of those four types, there will be no river source or river in the new hex. So it seems like you can't get one a river source. Can you? How do you get one in your actual hex? Let me read this again. Roll one die. If the result are, is odd, there will there definitely will not be any rivers in the new hex. Fair enough. If the result is even, there may be a river source in the hex. All right, that's where I am. Roll the die again. Consult the directional indicator printed on the map board. If the adjacent hex in the indicated direction is a lake, swamp, jungle swamp, or unexplored, there might be a river source located in the center of the hex. Or there is. And the river flows from there into the adjacent hex indicated. If the adjacent hex is not one of those four types, there will be no river source or river of the hex. I see. Okay. So basically, uh, I guess what is the thing for lakes and things? I'm not sure. Well, I'll just have to see. So right now, that is all we need, I think. Okay, so that's that we're gonna do. Mountain peaks. Well, there's a note here about mountain peaks. Whenever a player discovers mountain terrain in a hex, he will roll to determine the height of the most impressive peak. Oh, okay, that's for scoring. That's kind of cool. Well, we're not gonna mess around with it now. All right, so we don't have that. Now we've got a swamp hex. Five odd, so nothing. And now we have a grassland. Five, nothing, and then the last grassland, two. Uh, let's see, and then we got a. What would that be? Three would be down. We don't really know how things are flowing yet. So three would be that there was if it's unexplored. River source is located the center of the hex, and we put a blue dot. Okay. Now it's flowing up. Kind of get the sense. Well, I guess we don't know how things are flowing. Really? All right. I guess we're supposed to go with it. Right, I'm just gonna go with it. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna prejudge what we're getting here. Seventy-five. There and then. Okay. All right. Now we're back to go switch. All right. There. That's what we got. Now we're back to row two. I rolled a five, which is grasslands. Oh, where's our grassland? Here we go. If more than so. Here's, the, I guess you know what the problem is. I'm starting to proceed. I think I need to figure out. So I'm going to use this. Okay, so I'm going to use. I'm going to use this here to figure out what. Where is our coast? Where is our coast? Six. Oh man. All right. 
don't know how to make a note, but our coastline's actually going towards zero, zero. So things are, this is our general coastline. I wish I could, I can't really make a note. So you gotta try to remember that's our, that everything's flowing that way. So we're talking about flowing out or in. That's the flow. So in that kind of way, it sort of makes sense, or at least that's our, that's kind of our low land. It's maybe out here somewhere. I was hoping, I was hoping it wouldn't be facing that way. Just for my ease, but okay. So now we um, we can just roll because we don't know no known rivers. Six even. Uh, roll the die again, and now we got to check the tracker. One. So it looks like I'm just gonna put another. I just need to keep this feature drawer open. It looks like we have some something kind of snaking like that. All right, let's roll. I don't even know. I don't know how much of this I'm going to get through. Not very much. It seems like five more grasslands. Well, it's going to make you keep opening and closing those. Aren't you? Okay. What? Five. Let's see. If one or more rivers is known to flow out of the new hex, I guess I don't know. This is kind of interesting. Is that now two rivers flowing out? Could this can be considered flowing out? I guess we don't know. I'm just going to roll and say we don't know. Six, that's even. Now that means I got to roll a direction. One, which means ah, I guess it kind of makes sense. We got this. Intri intriguingly enough, it kind of makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. Well, actually, no. Sorry. First, I'm going to set this. No, I need a bigger blue dot. Actually, no. I I can do this now. So I'm going to like that. Delete it. I guess I'll leave it in there. I don't have a good. I'm going to make this 75. I'm going to put it here. And then. Shapes. Okay. Curve, I guess. Or maybe just a line is better. I want to snap. I want to make you river. Teal color, that's gonna be way too big, so let's make it 20. Start here. Even 20 is too big. There we go. Okay. So now we got this one, so it's now, if we'd rolled and given this this thing a number, we could talk about do that drainage, do the drainage part of it, because there's like I said, there's this interesting system of drainage. Or I'll switch to it; we can see it called the uh, drainage basin rule. I'm not; I don't think I'm going to mess with that now. So the damage drain, the drainage basin rule says the approximate size of the rivers prepended on the map order estimated by early explorers from the volume of water we mentioned before discharged at their mouth. For example, the, or sorry, the Congo, for example, was almost certain to be a longer river than the Vol. To re reflect this knowledge and numbers printed at the mouth of each river, there should be at least this many hexes of river, swamp, jungle swamp, or lake connected to the mouth of the river. Until this condition has been satisfied, the river can only end in a new hex if there is no adjacent hex to which it can be joined. 
However, if a river has branched, either branch may end as long as the other can't go. So it's kind of neat, right? Because it's giving us this concept of you uh, making your rivers make sense, so to speak. So what we could do, so I guess what I'll do, it's not we can, not only can we, but we shall, I suppose. We'll mark off a number for this. So let's see, I'm rolling a d20 and I got seven. I don't know if I'll be able to remember that, but this river seven. So so far, we've got one. This is going to be connected to it. We just don't have the ending connection. One, two, three, four. Maybe we should just should I just go ahead and so this one definitely has a has coming in and out. So I think we can actually just go ahead and that's the wrong thing I need features. I think we can actually, we are safe to fill this one in as well. There we go. All right, so now we've got this. We have, uh, This kind of thing going on. And I don't know if I'm doing this 100% correctly. But I'm doing it. I probably could take out these things because they are in swamp already. But I'm just going to leave them in. We don't know what this is yet. But we know that there's a source of the river. But maybe there's multiple. I don't know. That's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm doing it. All right. that's We need another hex. I rolled a two. Going back here, that gives us a mountain. Go back to terrain. Go back to mountain. There's no river coming or going. I roll a one, so there's nothing going on there. And then finally, we know there's a source here. Five, another grassland. Own a lot of grass. Okay. <laughs> and I don't need to roll for that because we already have that one pegged. On to the next row. Rolled a four, which is... I'm just going to use jungle because they're giving me jungle. I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, yeah, if it's jungle, I need to roll again to see whether it's... Let's see. Roll again if it's jungle and swamp or just jungle. Five. Nope, not jungle and swamp. It is just... Jungle, so where's my handy dandy jungle? I don't think there's anything else there. After basic terrain, if the new hex being mapped is lake, swamp, or jungle swamp. Nope, no jungle swamp. Okay, so. All right, so I got to roll to see if there's any kind of rivering going on. I rolled a two, so there might be. Rolled a six, so it's kind of back up here. I'm just going to connect it to this. I feel like that just makes the most sense. That's off the map anyway. I'm not trying to go off the map right now. So we got a big joining of the rivers there, which is interesting in its own way. I'm um, trying to see if I can pick up some speed and go faster, but all right, six. And remember, in the game, you'd be going and doing stuff, right? You wouldn't just be doing this kind of as I'm doing it. So there's an actual lake. Uh, we'll do. All right, we actually have a lake. Rivers and oasis. Okay, if a new hex being mapped is a lake, there will be no visible river course through the hex and further. Yep. Okay, so great. So I can just skip that entirely. I mean, it kind of makes sense that this would do that. I'll probably get rid of these circles. 
I'm sure I'm doing something wrong with these sources. But let me just see that again. If a river source is located in the center of the hex. And the river flows. Alright. Uh The adjacent hex in the indicate direction is lake or unexplored. Okay. Right. And then the other part of it was. All right. I, we'll just have to figure this out as we go. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong with these sources. I am 100% certain. But we'll keep going with it. One. We got desert. Let's note A, if adjacent X is already Canyon Jungle, this will give... No, we don't have that. So we're just going to have to go with... Got some of that. Some of that desert. So I'm not going to need to roll because you can't have one. But we, oh, we could have oases. Uh, let's see. Rivers and oases. Okay, right, right, right. For other bases, okay. Okay. Where about the desert? Uh, river flows into river. River sources may not be found in the desert. Instead, where one would find a source, I see. If we, in, so there might be an oasis. I'll roll. Even. Three. Down. So since I did roll for a river source, finds an oasis. The only way to find an oasis, desert hex, is only of running. Rivers running through them to or from adjacent. Explored. Un unlike other terrain features, which would be the same for any explorer, oases are only. Okay, I guess I'm just going to put. I'll just have to put a blue dot for an oasis. Oops, no, wrong way. Features. There's an oasis there. I, I don't know if there's water. I guess we could say if there's water flow. I don't know. I don't know. Someone who's, if anyone is uh, knowledgeable in the game, let me know. Are oasis supposed to connect? I don't know. Three, next hex, swamp. Did this follow that same rule? Like if you're next to the desert, go from swamp. I think we're going to do this. So I'm going to do that rule. Instead of swamp, we're getting grassland. Got nothing coming in. I'm going to roll for water. Get nothing. And then down here, I'm going to roll for the next one. Four is jungle. Now we got to roll to see if it's jungle something, something. I got a one. Uh, no. Nothing. It's just jungle now for water. Six, so maybe. And then the direction is also six. Indicate. I don't think it can come from there. So there's nothing. And finally, six, we get another lake. All right. How does this look to folks? People are looking at this and saying, oh, this kind of makes sense, or does it looking too rando? Got grasslands again. What do people think? Roll for water. Well, actually, there's water. I guess there's at least one water flowing in. Or flowing out, rather. So here's a big write up on okay so let's let me switch because this is kind of another sort of bigger kind of section so there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot here written right so the, the the way this procedure works is first you look for what's flowing out and here we have one from 000 to point zero zero two and i'm just kind of i'm going with it i don't know exactly how that's supposed to work because you have water present doesn't say but since this is the first hex we're rolling because in the maps remember again in the maps i think i should have been drawing the flow but i can't draw the flow here you'd be drawing the flow and that would tell you where the next hex is i'm not doing that because it's just not the the tool 
and uh, it's a little bit, I don't want to say flaky is not the right word. It's a little uh, mercurial, I find. The river tool, so it's not easy to add on to it. Otherwise, I could do that. Maybe next time I will. So in any case, since I roll this one first, I'm just going to say that. So now we have this whole big thing of text. When only one river is, is known to flow out of a new hex, it may end here or be connected to rivers, swamps, or lakes and other adjacent hexes. If one or more rivers is also known to flow into the new hex, all right, that's, we don't have to worry about that. If there are no other rivers known to flow into the new hex, but there are unexplored hexes, which we've got, which are adjacent to the new hex, the river will usually be connected to one of those hexes. Roll one die and consult the directional vector. All right, so we're rolling a die. We got one, which would be pointing towards a hex that's unexplored, pointing towards 001.002. Uh, let's see, roll and die. Right. If the hex is lying in the direction indicated as a lake unexplored, the river will flow out of it, connect with the part flowing into the new hex being mapped. Okay. So it's unexplored, so I can stop reading there. And we can just go ahead and go boop. Like that, so I'm. You know what? I'm going to try to. Let's see if this will work, because I think it will be easier if I can do that. So first, I'm going to select. Uh, can I select more than one? No. What if I shift? Nope. Okay. Wait. Wait. Close that. Go to shapes. Line. We've got our river. So I'm going to go from here. Here, 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 and then here. I'm gonna turn that off. Oops. All right. So that's what we've got there. Now we need to roll for this new hex. Has a river flowing in. If more than if one only no flow out of a new hex, it may in there. All right. So. I guess we don't. Is there a rule about if there's. Okay, so if there's more than one river, it has to be a lake, a swamp, or a jungle swamp. So that's not, we don't, we don't have that. Okay. All right. Oh, so I guess maybe we do need to read this other part now. So now it says, when only one river is known to flow out of a new hex, which is what we have. Uh. The, or no, technically, ah, here's the thing, is is that Oasis? I guess it's, if there are more than one river known to flow in, all the rivers are connected. There are no other rivers known to flow into the new hex, but there are unexplored hexes. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it probably makes the most sense, I, honestly, for this. There to be some kind of, maybe it's a, uh, Okay, so here is where it gets can get kind of tricky. Control drag to move. No, that wasn't too bad. All right. I think maybe that's just the easiest for our purposes. But there's maybe there's a there's an oasis and then there's a seasonal river that flows out and then goes. So now it's I rolled a five, which is grassland. So at least that's I feel like we're making I'm going to roll this one down here. Five more grasslands. Roll. I don't have any. So now I can say I have no water coming in or out. I rolled odd, so there's no water in there at all. Or I rolled jungle. So jungle, because it's near here, I'm going to say that that's grasslands. Is there any water flowing through here? Nope. All right, good. We could go fast. Six means another lake. We have a kind of a big lake, I guess. We don't have to worry about flow and then one desert. Maybe it's not a very good lake. The lake is not very uh not a not not a very good lake. Maybe it's a salt lake. All right, now we're down. Let's see where we are. Okay. Four. 
jungle again. We have no direct water courses coming out. So I did get water and then two. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there, you know, oh my gosh. How am I going to do this? Because they're using pointed tops. I'm going to say that goes one, two, like that. So we got some water flowing out to there. Oops, I'm in the wrong. Long thing again. Rain. Shapes. Lines. Okay, but where is it flowing to? Hold on a minute. If we if river sources, okay. Roll one, it does odd. They're definitely not be right. We will even roll the die again and consult the director. Whoops, the directional indicator. Rivers roll and dive. Okay, if the result is even, we got that. There may be a river source in the hex. Roll the die again and consult the directional indicator. Oh, yep. If if the adjacent hex in the indicated direction is a lake, swamp, or unexplored, yep, unexplored. Mark it with a blue dot, and the river flows from there into the adjacent hex indicated. If the river is if it's not one. So okay, so it's flowing into here. So we got to make our line. Is it is uh oh it's not snapping. I want you to snap, pal. There we go. Okay. So we got that to look forward to. So now we gotta roll again for that hex, which I got a six, which is a lake again. Okay, well that solves that easily enough. Guess I should now I gotta manage that shape. Shape. Control. Something like that. All right. Oh no. I could neaten that up later. Or maybe I should just Select, delete it, and then make a new one. Hell, oh. is that really how you're going to do me there? Come on. All right. Don't like it. Or maybe that. Did I have to take it off? Okay, there we go. Okay, good. All right, so there's like a little mini little rivulet almost that uh, no, that goes in there. All right, easy peasy. Now, three swamp. Okay, I can I can a swamp is good. There's swamp. Got any water coming out? Yes. Which way is it? One back. So we've got kind of water coming back in again from here. This is where just having pens or paper and you know just <laughs> pencils just is a lot, a lot easier. Same kind of thing going on. Three, four is jungle. I think this is one's going to be easy because actually, this one's going to be easy because we have water. We know there's a lake here, so we're just going to flow. Yeah, I don't have any scale here, Magnus. It's uh, hard to say what's going on. Um, we've got this jungle, just a little river that's just kind of flowing into this here. This one, we've got kind of a long flow coming into this and presumably beyond. And here we've got some flowing 
Well, it's kind of interesting, but we are getting some nice waterways. And then here, this one down here, remember we haven't, of course I don't have any moons for anything. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? That this would then, how do you add a, oops. I don't know if there's an easy way. Well, I guess this is kind of, it's like a lake and then it kind of goes into swamps and just pours in there. Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a good sense of what the directions are. And if I'd had notes, or I could put some arrows, I could, but I don't have. I suppose I could have drawn some arrows in. We'll have to figure out what makes sense at the end of it all. To another mountain. Getting all. Maybe we can presume from this that this is some kind of, maybe highlands is not the right word. And remember, they're not concerned with hills. This is probably something that if I was going to adapt this into something more, I'd, I'd want to have maybe some more kind of uh, indicators of what's going on with the terrain. We kind of have these peaks, this is kind of valleys, and then mountainous terrain. So maybe we have kind of valley things, and that might account for, we'd probably want to look at also, okay, what is this saying about the elevation of, say, these lakes versus this lake? There's some stuff going on. But, I mean, we're getting some interesting, and I got desert again for what it's worth. For that corner. There. And no, definitely no water. So let's just let's just keep going and get all this out there. Two is a mountain. Roll the water. Nope. Next six. I keep on sixes, which is another lake. Don't need to roll for water. Jeez, this is a big... I know there was some rule about lakes. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Special note on Lake Hexes. Two lakes which are already joined by a river. Oh, that's... Nope. Um, okay. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So it is literally just a big lake with a swamp. Two. Mountain. Get another peak. Any water in them dar mountains? Five. Nope. Four jungle. Uh let's see, where's my where's my good old jungle? Oh, you know what? It's gonna be grassland, right? Because we've got desert hex. We can't have desert next to jungle. There is water. Maybe five. So that'll be, let's see, one, two, three, four. Or rather, one, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, I guess we could definitely. I mean, I can see what happens. It's just going to go, there's just going to be a little flow like that. So I'll draw in now because it, it actually works with the rules and it also makes sense. Go there, and then that last corner hex two is another mountain. Whoa! And now roll three, so no. Hold on a minute. Why? Okay, it may end there. No rivers known to flow in. Oh, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, that's the thing with the drainage <laughs> basin rules. Uh, it's probably, you know, I almost feel like you almost, I'm going to, it's kind of interesting because I kind of think, I feel like I'm just going to make it executive. Well, no, it could, it could end there because it's definitely not ending in the desert. So maybe these, I kind of feel like you would see these little drainages pouring in. Maybe I'm just going to 
put those in. It's not technically by the rules, or maybe we just assume that this grassland just gets a lot of everything kind of flows like that. Well, let's like it. Well, let's roll for this last. What is this down here? Five is grasslands. Water. Yes. Let's see, when we're rolling for that, which is it? Uh, let's see, we rolled again. Sold the direction of table. The Jessenex indicated swamp at the river source located inside the hex, and the river flows from there into the hex. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a, just a little touch of river, which I guess makes sense. No, not featured shapes. A little touch of river goes in there. We could probably vary the sizes, right? You know, you could come back and edit the sizes again so that they make more sense. We got one more hex is also grassland. Which is where we got here. So, and here's what I'm going to I'm going to make another, you know, and we're doing this before. And if you were playing this solo and you were doing this as you were going, you would have to do this a little bit differently. You'd be having to make some kind of, I guess, game time decisions. For me, I'm going to make a game time decision that this, oh, my cat is just sneezing his head off over there. That comes from there. Yeah, actually, no, I need I'm gonna erase that. And I'm gonna assume that uh I'd say I did kind of try to set up a flow, so I'm gonna assume the flow goes like that. Oh, that works. There we go. We end up with something like that. Magnus says, that's just what I was wondering. I'm really liking this river routing system, but the mind goes to the question of elevation. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. And it we don't have it. We have mountains, and then that's it. In terms of, we kind of have to guess. Now, it seems like the flow like, is kind of going, you know, so these, these two are flowing into this lake. Uh, we don't have, you know, this is flowing in. This is flowing in this wetlands, which is kind of flowing in this lake. Probably as another executive decision, there's something flowing, maybe flowing out of here. I just, or maybe it's just independently. I don't know. Or we would say, I think, you know, the, the order of operations is interesting because of what's happening. So you have these things of the rivers flowing. But, you know, I guess the thing is, keep in mind, let's just say we're playing with six mile hex. There could possibly be two rivers and then two lakes and this flowing in between. Does it? I don't know. I'm sure there. It's very, very wet. It would almost feel like this would kind of turn into swampy area and then it would make a lot more sense. This flows kind of into this muck and then out. Um, but that's just the way the cookie crumbled. I probably I am. I'm, I say I'm probably I am sure I did things wrong. But what you I guess we want to take the kind of big picture. There are all kinds of ways we could potentially tweak this thing, tweak this to suit. Um, in terms of, in terms of making it nice, making it more nice. But what we, what we can see we're getting is we're getting mostly sensible, sensical terrain. We kind of have to figure out what the what the deserts next to the lakes mean, and we could probably make more rules. So there was a rule for hey, you can't have jungles next to deserts, and then as somebody commented, you probably should do that for swamps. Probably should do that for lakes too. And then this, if we follow that, then probably this one here becomes grassland. And you know, I'm gonna just go ahead and I'll make that executive decision that yes, I should have done that. This goes to grassland. So what you have is you could think of it as you maybe have this uh almost high elevation, dry deserty thing, and then the water's flowing, but the water's flowing kind of on the mountains sort of down in these grasslands and then it's you know there's little trickles become oriented this lake system same thing from here 
this side maybe is more where the uh it's almost protected by these peaks you could say maybe it's the wetter side and then you get water flowing we'd have to figure it out <clears throat> but the plus side is you here you're getting terrain and you're getting rivers that you can make sense of as opposed to either if you're rolling rivers as a terrain then you can end up with some oddities there or again when you're rolling solo as you play and you're wondering what do i do with rivers so here they're giving you some rules but we have to keep in mind let me just need to kind of tweak these see if we could find something right we do have to keep in mind that for for their rules they're dealing with where you're starting from the known like that is the big that is the big thing that they are are doing right they are starting they're starting from the known working their way out so they don't have to worry about a complete blank page they just have to worry about starting with some background and then knowing so we need to it almost makes sense that maybe if i was going to do this as a method you have to kind of go along an edge do maybe even do a horizontal edge do a do the do at least two edges first and then figure out everything else because then you can kind of say oh here's where the river's flowing maybe figure out which way the rivers are flowing and then do that edge there's there's probably some things to do but this is an interesting exercise hope it, some folks found it valuable maybe we'll do something more with this later on but uh yeah that's what we got certainly not the worst thing i've seen and i like it keep in mind is trying to model something particular this is not supposed to be anywhere on earth it's supposed to be in essentially kind of an and a version of africa so we're getting kinds of uh biomes and ecosystems and, and kind of climates showing up all right folks hope that this was you enjoyed it oh wait magnus has got a question do, do i think i could post the river route rules somewhere in discord uh yeah i'll throw them on the form so um i gotta i gotta i got some stuff to do this evening but uh between now and I, hopefully and remind me if i forget magnus i'll I'll post them in the forum thread that I'll make for this stream so folks can, uh, we can mess around them and keep plugging away. All right. So yeah, if I forget Magnus, remind me. Everyone else, game on, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.